There's a new renaissance in Paris with coffee. Unbelievable, man. This is great. Dude, this is a cool way to see Paris. When it comes to fragrance and aroma, France has everything to do with coffee. Do you think we can make a perfume that would kind of smell like the coffee? Why not? Here we go. Wow. OK, we have arrived. Mm. It's ridiculous. Wait up the coffee. This is complete lab stuff. Cheers. <laughs> For over 20 years, I've traveled the world searching for exceptional coffees. But among the greatest treasures I've discovered along the way are the incredible people, their fascinating cultures, and the most awe-inspiring landscapes you could possibly imagine. Now, I have the opportunity to show you a different side of the world through the lens of coffee. Paris, the city of light and one of the most visited places in the world. Millions of people come here each year, drawn by this city's irresistible charms. The cuisine, culture, art, films, fashion, and theater. Paris has an incredible vibe, and the cafe culture here is sort of at the heart of it. The tables just spill out under the pavement. And in my opinion, the French have embraced the social culture of coffee better than any other society in the world. Despite its prominent place in French culture, however, the coffee's quality has never really been the priority. So the cafe scene is like one of my favorite things about Paris, but ironically, the coffee is usually terrible. In the past, it's always been that way, but see, I, I feel like the focus has always been on the social experience around coffee versus the quality. That, however, is changed because there's a new renaissance in Paris with coffee. I'm on my way to see a man who's probably done more to change the quality of coffee in France than anyone else. I've never met him, but in my business, it's kind of like the equivalent of going to meet the Pope. Follow your nose. There he is. Hey. Michael McCauley in his element. Hey. <laughs> How are you, man? Great to see you. Good to see you, too. <laughs> Michael describes himself as a coffeeologist, and he works for Café Richard. Founded in 1892, Café Richard is one of the most famous coffee companies in France. Michael has been living in Paris for more than a decade, and in that time, he has literally changed the reputation of coffee here. Coffee uh, in Paris is, is not just a drink, it's like a place, it's a, it's a, a moment, uh, it's a flavor, it's, it's so many things, you know, it has a, so many meanings. Sort of the subject of my morning was how, you know, you can sit in a café in France, and, you know, traditionally the coffee wasn't very good at all, but the culture was the best in the world. The ultimate thing I want to do is, like, uh, bring coffee up to the same level as wine and, and cuisine uh, in France, because um, it, it's sort of, you know, it's like, wow, uh, the French do all this so well, but why isn't coffee at the same level? Coffee has this amazing power to form new friendships, and Michael has invited me on an immersive two-wheel tour of the coffeescape in Paris. I'm looking forward to drinking way too much coffee all day <laughs> and riding bikes. Cheers. <laughs> Isn't that gorgeous? That is. That's, that's like... Dude, so, this is a cool way to see Paris. Well, this is the, one of the quickest way. You know, no traffic. Yeah. See all the sights, stop when you want, don't have to worry about a parking place. Good. It's cool how you, you, know, you just rent these bikes for an hour, for as long as you want. It's so cheap. Being on the bike is the ideal way to get around Paris, and I'm taking it all in. The amazing sights and smells make this entire city like sensory candy. Okay, look at all the gargoyles. That's so this is Notre Dame? This is Notre Dame. This is the perfect way to see Notre Dame, which is the most visited monument in Paris. Look at this. This is like Yves Saint Louis. It's an island in the middle of the Seine. It's the most exclusive area of Paris. Wow. You have to be pretty well off to live there. OK, let's cross over the Seine now. We have a great little coffee shop we'll bring you to. We're crossing the Pont Neuf Bridge, which was built around 400 years ago, and it's the oldest of 37 bridges in the city. We're heading to Petisserie des Rêves for an adventure in the world of French pastries.
say, magnifique. You have to think differently in this place. I mean, the pastries here are not so much food as they are edible pieces of art. Pastries are really the hot thing right now in, in, in Paris. And pastry chefs are like uh, very, very popular. And so, so there's they have a like sort of celebrity status. Uh, definitely. The celebrity chef here is Philippe Contecini, who, along with his business partner, created Patisserie de Rêve over nine years ago to create exquisite French pastries. This is like the um, star pastry of, of chef uh, Philippe Conticini. The history of this pastry symbolizes a bicycle race between Paris and Brest, mm. which is in, in Brittany. Yeah. Um, and it's in the form of a bicycle wheel. Gonna... It feels like it would be a crime to come all this way and not try one of chef Conticini's creations. This might be one of the highlights of my trip right here. I almost feel guilty eating it. Yeah. You know? Oh, you shouldn't feel guilty about eating it. All right, here we go. Oh, wow. Drum roll, please. Mm. Oh. Okay. Mmm. No. Mm. It's like Nutella, creamy, nutty, mm. like rounded. It's like a, it's like a symphony orchestra. This pastry is truly sublime, <laughs> but I can't help adding my own little twist. And the chef, uh, Contucini, he had this coffee is a special blend that he actually designed to go with his pastries. Really? I'm gonna dip it in there. Oh, I'm gonna I dip it in God. the espresso. You're absolutely right. Totally gonna dip it in there. And that's totally Let it French. Soak. Let it soak. Is that yeah, French? Totally French. Dunking. <laughs> Dunking is fun. It's ridiculous. No. It's so good, it's ridiculous. Good thing it's small, because... <laughs> yeah, well, I could eat nine of them. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Coming up, when it comes to fragrance and aroma, France has everything to do with coffee. Awesome. It's time to head to the next stop on my coffee journey. To get there, we ride past the famous Place de Vosges, one of the oldest squares in Paris. Originally built by King Henry IV in the early 17th century, the Place de Vosges is now a public park. We're en route to visiting Michael's favorite local coffee roaster, but on the way, there's something else he wants me to see. So, the next stop, Joey, is a very, very historical place, very famous. I won't tell you what it is. Right. You're going to discover it yourself. Right. And I got to say, Paris is all about the bikes. Come on, Joey, we're almost there. Oh. Cafe Procope? Cafe Procope is the first coffee shop in Paris. And in this very space, Napoleon Bonaparte used to actually come and drink coffee. And they say that one time he couldn't pay the bill and he had to leave his hat on the rack as collateral until he came back. The cafe has been here since 1686. Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, and David Voltaire were a few among many historical icons who came here for coffee regularly. It's said that the US Constitution and French Revolution were largely conceived of over coffee here. One of the things I love about my adventures is seeing the places where coffee and history intersect. Next on the tour is Café Verlet, which in my guide Michael's opinion has the finest boutique roaster in all of Paris. Café Verlet. Oh, this is nice. How are you? How are you? They have coffees from all over the world, but I'm here to try something that has a long tradition in France, cold brew coffee. For that, I turn to the expert, Café Verlet's barista, Antoine. So yeah, I've been hearing a lot about your cold brew, and I'd love to be on it. It'd be great to try some of it. I try every day something different. I brew it during 24 hours. Wow. Cold brew has grown in popularity by leaps and bounds in Paris. And here in France, it was the soldiers from the Foreign Legion who first drank it over 100 years ago. Unlike iced coffee, where the coffee is brewed hot and poured over ice, cold brew is made by steeping coffee grounds in either warm or cold water to make a type of coffee concentrate, which is then diluted. It's like the, the whiskey, a, a good whiskey. You yeah. need to put mineral water to develop the, the test. OK, okay. so what are we going to find in this? Uh, you're going to have Flavor. a really dark chocolate test, but really like 70% cacao. Oh, wow. It's oh, really wow. interesting. Oh, wow. Really interesting. It's, it's totally chocolate. Because the coffee flavor is extracted without heat, the bitter elements never make it into the cup, giving cold brew a much smoother and sweeter taste. Thank you. Fantastic. Mm. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. 
You're welcome. It's a pleasure. After a fantastic start to my trip in Paris, my coffee journey now takes me to the south of France, hopping on a train, which will take me six hours away to the town of Grasse, which also happens to be the world's perfume capital. There, I'll be looking to follow my nose into some of the complexities of fragrance and how it relates to coffee. This is what Grasse is famous for, growing flowers to make perfume, and this is perhaps the most coveted flower of them all, jasmine. It's early morning, and this is the best time to pick the flowers in order to achieve maximum fragrance extraction. Jasmine is believed to have originated in the Himalayan mountains of western China, but it is said that some of the world's best jasmine is grown right here in Grasse. And for me, Grasse has an important connection to coffee, and it's all about the fragrance. So when I told people I was coming to France to build the perfect blend, everyone kept saying, why France? What does France have to do with coffee? And the thing is, coffee is all about sensory. And that's not just what we taste, but it's what we smell. And Grasse France is the perfume capital of the world. Uh, there are people here called noses. And, and what they do is they identify and they blend fragrances for perfumes. When it comes to fragrance and aroma, France has everything to do with coffee. Some coffees naturally have a jasmine fragrance, and it's one of my favorites. It's a smell that's especially common in varieties of coffee that originated in Ethiopia. I've come to Grasse to learn from the experts how to identify the essential fragrances of the most memorable coffees. Coming up, do you think we can make a perfume that would kind of smell like the coffee? Is it exactly the same? It's even better. You hit it. Voila. Voila. Grass is a really quaint medieval town with a long history of flowers, fragrances, and thus, the perfume industry, which really started to take off in the 18th century. I might add that the winding streets are pleasantly disorienting, and you can follow the scents of rose, jasmine, and orange blossom into these charming little perfume shops. And the fragrances and flavorings developed in Grass are as authentic as the town itself. Coffee has some of the most complex aromatic characteristics of anything on earth, so I'm headed to the Institute of Perfumery to glean some wisdom from one of the world's best noses. The first thing for me is something um, uh, woody with the, a root effect, something very deep, and something slightly bitter. Philippe Collette is famous for his nose. He's been a perfumer since the 1970s, and he teaches groups of students how to recognize and remember up to 2,000 different fragrances. Today, I've brought him Arabica beans grown in Panama, and I want to learn how he applies his knowledge to coffee. The top nut is, for me is green, like, uh, it's like something like galbanum. There's no one I've ever met in the coffee industry like Philippe who can go this deep into the recognition of fragrances. It's compelling to hear what he thinks of the coffee samples, and I've long believed that in some instances there's a connection between coffee and the other plants grown nearby. I've noticed that um, oftentimes um, coffee can have a fragrance or even a flavor uh, that is similar to some of the plants that grow around the coffee. And um, sometimes eucalyptus, you know, which grows around the coffee. Sometimes we even pick up, you know, of course, cocoa grows near the coffee. We can pick up cocoa beans, sometimes blackberry. Um, you know, so, but there's no real proof. No one can quantify that that's where it's from. But it, it just seems like there's, you know, some of those chemical components are going down into the earth. Watching and listening to Philippe and his students analyze the coffee samples makes me wonder whether what we're smelling in the coffee can be recreated in the perfume. And I'm guessing if you could make a coffee perfume anywhere in the world, then Grasse would be the perfect place. The history of the perfume industry here is fascinating, and one man in particular played a key role in making Grasse the epicenter of the perfume industry. During the medieval ages, the best place in the world for leather was Grasse, France, and it was how soft they tanned the leather. It was unlike any other place in the world. But there was a dirty little secret in their technique, and I do mean dirty, because they used horse urine 
and human feces. So you can imagine the smell that would occur from this very soft but very nasty leather. And the women of the royal court would complain of this smell that permeated their skin. It became a problem, especially with leather gloves. So a gentleman named Gallimard came up with this idea of dipping the gloves in rose oil, and that began the perfume industry in Grasse, France. Jean de Gallimard is long gone, but 270 years later, his legacy is still strong. Today, I'm entering fragrance heaven, where I will have the opportunity to create my own perfume. Hi, I'm Caroline. How are you? I'm Joey. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Excellent. I'm, I'm so excited to do this. This has been like one of my lifelong dreams, is to get your opinion on some smells, and we can make maybe a perfume that tastes like the coffee. We'll see. OK. Mm -hmm. Caroline de Boutney creates perfumes for clients all over the world and can not only recognize thousands of fragrances, but understands the ways in which they react with one another. How cool is that? I want her to experience the fragrance of this coffee so that she can lead me through the process of combining some of its unique characteristics into a perfume. I would love for you to smell this coffee and tell me what you smell in there. What, what's, uh... Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, you got it. Perfect. <laughs> it's good to know it smells like coffee. Smell like yes. the chocolates, but dry, dry, and very black chocolate. Like dark chocolate? Very, very dark. It's maybe blueberry. Oh man, that's so cool. That's cool. She totally nailed it. But dry blueberry. Yes, exactly. And you know, that's when you taste this coffee. It, it very much so has that taste. Very dried blueberry, very dark chocolate. Do you think we could make a perfume that would smell good with those elements that would kind of smell like the coffee? So if we people take like, wow, he very, actually smells like coffee too. If we take the very uh, dry part of the chocolate, we can make a woody perfume for men with a dry touch of chocolate and why not blueberry? And uh, if we add like a very sweet part, we can do a nice perfume for young ladies. Nice. So there's one, there's a man's version and a young woman young version lady. of the geisha coffee. The coffee, yeah. I love it. All right, I'm excited. So we can, you can show me how to do it? I can show you. All right, cool. Now comes the tricky part. Caroline has to figure out exactly which fragrances she needs to work with. And that process starts with these special strips of paper. And I've learned that if we just smelled from the top of the bottle, we'd only get the most prominent notes. Be careful with the coffee, it's very strong. Oh, it's coffee. This is coffee. Yeah. Well, it does smell like roasted coffee. It doesn't smell like, like fake coffee. Very roasted. Once the specific components have been chosen, Caroline must mix them in just the right proportions. And the process is both an art and a science. While we aren't trying to build a perfume that smells exactly like the coffee, the idea is to develop something that exudes some of the same specific fragrances, and thereby sort of uniquely capture the essence of the beans. It's exactly the same. It's exactly the same? Exactly the same. <laughs> this is, it's good. I, I love the coffee-ness. It's even better. It's like you, you hit it. Like it needed that little edge, but I didn't recognize that it needed that edge. But now that I smell it, I'm like, it's 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 dead. It's right on. I mean, this really this smells like the coffee. Voila. Okay. Voila. <laughs> France has taught me so much about how to understand different fragrances and aromas in coffees. I've come back to Paris to meet up with Michael, who has invited me to the Cafe Richard Coffee Lab. Coming up. Oh man, that's so cool. So. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. The coffee lab is at Cafe Richard's headquarters, which is located on the outskirts of the city. I'm almost giddy with excitement because these are the places where the coffee magic happens. 
This whole building is all you, this whole place? Oh yeah. This is Academy du Café, owned by Café Richard. The building is large and operates like a laboratory for making coffee and also training the baristas who brew it. Welcome this, to the Academy uh, du Café. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> this is how I pictured heaven being. All oh, these, like, here's like seven like independent barista stations with yeah. like the nicest machines on earth. It's like the stick shift to a sports yeah, car. Yeah. You know, it's like gorgeous machine. Vroom. So you, you find the most talented people and you kind of put them together and you train them in here yeah. and then you sort of bring their talent to life. And well, exactly, and some of them that are really yearning to, 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 to learn how to make good coffee because uh, they know that at the, in the end people come and have more coffee if they make it better. Coffee is surprisingly complex and it's easy to completely ruin something that could have been a masterpiece. And that's why having the right training is so important. Brewing great coffee is all about the details. This lab trains and develops baristas like Victor Del Pierre, who is currently making the drink that made him a world champion. Victor trained extensively here at the Academy under the watchful eye of Michael, who is an internationally certified barista judge. To become a world champion, Victor had to combine coffee and different alcohols to create two cocktails. What he's creating now combines coffee, cognac, and the experience of smoking a cigar. It's got a cigar in it? Yeah. Wow. Intense um, tobacco notes. Victor chose a coffee from the Dominican Republic which when extracted as an espresso, exuded tobacco-like characteristics. He then made his own syrup to mimic the peppery flavor of a cigar. Oh, so it's a little of each one. I Putting pour it in there. everything. And for the ritual. Nice, key component to the ritual. Exactly, here it is. Orange aroma. Orange Just aroma? Just perfume. What is that, like it heats it's up wood. the- uh... It's wood, What do you mean it's wood? There's wood inside there? Yes. Oh man, that's so cool. So imagine yourself in a cozy, elegant atmosphere that's and smell the orange perfume smoke. Yes, that's a wonderful moment. <laughs> Here is a CCC coffee, cognac, and cigar oh, experience. <laughs> so first, Swirl it. Oh, may I? Yes. Then drink by a, by small sips, like for digestive. Wow, definitely orange, like the orange, the zesty orange with the smoke. Yes. Unbelievable, man. Really, totally. It you know, really is. It's like it's that sensation. It is. It's like all in one. The whole experience of the cigar with the cognac with the espresso. If you had to combine it into one experience. Coffee is all about sensory. It's one of the most complex things we consume on Earth. And he's taken it to a whole new level. He's used that, that he's elevated that, that sensory level and, and combined it with other flavors that, that are natural with coffee, that go well with coffee, but you've done it yeah. in one drink. That's, I've never seen that before, ever. I mean, so that's... You, you can enjoy the pleasure of, of cigar, but uh, without uh, uh, any, any um, problem. I would say if you were ever gonna use the word kaleidoscopic to describe a cocktail, this would be the time. A lot of inspiration behind this drink came from Michael, who is currently preparing a recent coffee favorite of his own. So we're gonna try this, uh, try this siphon with this uh, uh, new Sumatran coffee. It's uh, actually a real special coffee. I'm really proud uh, to have it. We're like the only ones in France that have it. And it's called orangutan, Sumatra orangutan coffee. It's uh, grown in the Gallo Highlands. Yeah. This and coffee comes from an area of the Sumatran rainforest where orangutan's habitat is in danger due to the clear cutting of trees for palm oil. The hope is that more farmers will be incentivized to start growing coffee there as an alternative. And of course, this is like a chemistry lab coffee this maker. This is totally you know? a lab, a complete lab stuff. We're using a halogen heater which heats the water quickly. Everything is very precisely measured. No cowboy stuff here. 33 grams. Coffee. We'll give that a little stir, make sure everything's totally wet. And how long are you gonna? 70 seconds. 70 seconds. Yeah. I like, I really like the aroma on this. Okay, so we're up to our 70 seconds here. Take that heat away. Move this over to the tasting table.
So Michael was explaining to me that it's, it's the person who invented this was actually a marine meteorologist. And it's based on the principles of barometric pressure, which is pretty fascinating if you think about it. So when the water heats up, it vaporizes into steam and it becomes like the cloud. And then the cloud settles and it rains coffee. Good coffee. Okay, watch your hands. So it's gonna be a little bit hot. We're gonna let it yeah. decant in the cup. Still a little bit of warmth in there. We're in the tasting time. Pretty sweet. Yeah, it is. It's really, it's really, it is really clean and creamy. With uh, different clients, you know, we start talking about like uh, candied peaches or apricots in a in a in a coffee. They're like, what? Yeah, that's what's fascinating is that there, you know, there's so many components, and, and if you do it right, you get all these flavors. Where if you don't do it right, if you don't brew it right, if you don't measure yeah. it right, and you don't get the equation right, yeah. you may be still a decent cup of coffee, but you're missing stuff. Definitely. You know? Well, we could probably play around this for hours to what, three in the morning and yeah. then find the really perfect ratios. <laughs> yeah. But so, yeah, it's pretty good. I love it. One of the things I love about coffee is that it provides such a great platform for exploration and discovery. And it's rare to find something that is both artistically and scientifically challenging. My time in France has given me a wealth of perspective on working with fragrances and flavor. Most importantly, I've had the opportunity to connect with innovators of the French coffee scene and marvel at the beautiful country they call home. <laughs>